Hello, my name is Logi. Today is going to be another Patreon lesson. This video is an example of what is available to top tier patrons. Basically, if you're at that tier, you can ask me a question about whatever you want, and I will respond with your own personalized video answering the question. This particular patron wanted to learn the beginning section of Jumpstart by Greg Howe, and I figured there might be a good handful of people who might want to learn it as well. So with their permission, I'm putting it out. As usual, if you want to check out the Patreon material, feel free to check the first link in the description. Hope you enjoy this video. See you in the next one. What's happening, Patrick? This is going to be the beginning to Jumpstart by Greg Howe. I'm going to play over the track so you can kind of see what the lick looks like. Um, it repeats a bunch in the beginning. I'm going to come in on the second repetition because I can never catch the first one because it kind of comes out randomly. So uh, here we go. Hopefully I play well. There's the first one. stuff after that. So yeah, let's talk about what this part is. It is um, kind of tricky mechanically, but once you get the technique down, it's not too bad. It's still sort of fresh. I just learned it earlier today. So it's still sort of fresh in my hands. Um, there's also a couple, I mean, this I don't know exactly how I was playing it. This is just the way that I learned it just by listening to the recording. Um, so I'll go over like maybe two fingerings for this because there is one fingering that I think is actually better But I'm so committed to the first one that I I originally learned that it's hard for me to transition to the better fingering But you'll see what I mean when you get when we get there First of all, what is this sound? So if you listen to this track Naturally, you're probably thinking wow, that's like a crazy wild like jazz scale or something like that It's actually really simple. There's not much going on um, That's wild or crazy. It's just how it is being executed with like the jumpiness jumping around strings That's what makes it sound more complex than it actually is. So this is the sound C sharp minor is our main chord There are some other chords going on, but they don't really matter too much It's mostly just kind of focused on C sharp minor, but it's not just normal C sharp minor It is C sharp minor as a two chord. So what do I mean by that? We're technically At least for this moment not definitely not for the whole song, but at least for this moment you can think about this We're kind of in the key of B and we are playing around the sound that lives on the two of this key. If this is one, like here's our scale, B major scale, go to the two of that, this sound. So the sound that lives on a two chord is minor, standard minor, so one, two, flat three, four, five, flat seven, right, standard minor pentatonic with a two, that's like pretty standard minor, but the alteration that it has and the unique note that it has is a natural six. So if I play minor pentatonic, there's my minor pentatonic, I'm just playing on this low C sharp right there. I would call this right shape as far as the scale. That's my root flat seven. Normal six will be the color note for this particular sound, and that is always located back one fret from flat seven. So right there. So our full sound is now this. One, two, flat three, four, five, natural six, normal six, flat seven, and then one. You can also find um, that normal six up a whole step from the five. So if you know where five is, like let's say this is one five, go up a whole step. That's natural six. One, two, flat three, four, five, natural six, flat seven, one. That is the sound of two chord minor, right? There are multiple types of minor. This is the type of minor that lives naturally on the two chord, right? It's not the same minor that lives, for example, on the six chord. This would be a different type of minor. This particular minor, minor with a natural six, kind of the sound I've been playing. That sort of sound. Super common for this style, this kind of like heavy improv style because all of these, well, first of all, the natural six just sounds kind of cool, sounds different, but all of these notes generally work and none of them are super dissonant, right? Whereas if you're playing normal minor and you're playing flat six, like that's kind of the standard minor sound, this one based off the six chord. Right, that's like six chord minor, that would be minor with a flat six. Flat six can sometimes feel pretty tense when you play it. Like if I play a minor chord and then sing flat six over this, right, it sounds a little dissonant, but over the two chord that has a natural six, right, this sound, it's not as dissonant. So a lot of people like to use this sound um, for improv and whatnot. 
And there's also a lot of cool stuff you can find with the sound. For example, a lot of people will mess around, you're going to hear it in the solo too, a lot of people will mess around with jumping from the third to the natural six, because when you do that, like if this is my root up top, one, two, flat three, I like there's our standard flat three. Natural six is where? If this is one, that's five, natural six, up a whole step. Look at the distance between three and natural six, flat three, natural six. One, two, flat three, natural six. See that? That is what's called a tritone or a flat five, whatever. It's a quirky kind of odd sound that a lot of players will heavily feature when they're doing this. They'll like do runs where they're walking up a scale. And they'll do stuff like that, hit the flat three, jump right down to the natural six. Or they'll do this, right, natural six, down to the flat three. So that like innate tritone is built into the sound, and you're going to hear that quite a bit um, in the solo. So that's the main sound, so it's minor, standard minor with natural six, and there's one other color note you're going to hear, and that is flat five. Flat five, even though it's not in the key, it is a wildly common note, um, super popular in blues and rock and pretty much everything. I just finished doing a super long um, YouTube series on this note, so if you're interested in that, let me know. So that would be here. Flat five is located where? Exactly where it sounds like. If this is one, five up a power chord, flat five. So that's, I'm sure you've heard it before. Super common sound that a lot of people play bending up to flat five right so a very popular sound all of those notes what do we got minor one two flat three four five natural six flat seven one so minor with natural six right plus flat five that sound is the entirety of this lick right so as long as you have that sound in mind and you kind of understand what's happening everything in this lick is going to make a lot more sense well, let's get started with what it is let me see if i can remember it That's the sound. So let's go over each part individually, and then we'll call, I'll kind of walk you through technically what I'm doing as well. Um, we have this. So I've got the first little part looks like this. Uh, oh, by the way, let's kind of get our bearings for the root of the sound that we're playing. C sharp. Remember C sharp minor. There's our C sharp right here. So this, the shape or the kind of general scale structure that I'm building off of would be here. One, two, flat three, four, five, natural six, flat seven, one. Again, is this how he's playing it? I have no idea. This is just how I learned it. Um, I call this right shape. It's just kind of up an octave from where I just was. So we start here. That's flat five. How do I know? Because that's my root. That's flat five. Flat five, normal five. Flat seven, normal six. Like that. Kind of comfortable to play, actually, once you get it. And I'm just doing pick, hammer on, pick, hammer on, or a pick, hammer on, pick, pull off. I think that's what I'm doing. Then from here, you do what I just mentioned earlier. Natural six, jump up to the flat three, featuring that little tritone. Kind of a quirky, kind of nasty sound. Once you hit this top note, you come down flat three, natural six, five. See that shape kind of playing like a little chord like that. So, and then once you hit the five down here, jump up to the two on top. How do I know that's two? Because that's one, two, right? Excuse me, one, two. So, and after you hit this note, you come back to this, back to the five. That's one of the trickier parts. So let me just play that uh, by itself. Again. That's the hardest part, in my opinion, when I was trying to practice this. So technically what I'm doing, pick, hammer on, pick, pull off. I'm going downstroke, upstroke handles both of these notes. So if you watch my right hand, downstroke, turning around, upstroke, same upstroke following through. It's like a little mini sweep. Right? Now this kind of gets a little tricky. I am personally doing this. As I reach back to grab this note, I'm using my ring finger like that and then picking this one. So I don't know if that's the best fingering. I mean, you can also jump down with the pick, down, up, same upstroke, jump down with the pick, downstroke, upstroke. If you're comfortable picking, you can do that. I, that's not too comfortable for me, so I'm not doing it. That's how I would play personally. Ring finger. Now from here, we kind of start another pattern. After we do that, we play this note, that's the flat seven, B, down to the four. And I'm going downstroke, actually no, I'm not. I'm doing two upstrokes right there. Upstroke, follow through. Another little mini sweep right there. So let me play all of that. One more time. Little ring finger. 
pick, down stroke, two up strokes, or really one up stroke following through, playing both of these notes. I'll do it one more time. Now from here, we play these three. That's root, fourth, flat three. So root, that's I'm just looking up an octave from my kind of main root I'm thinking of. So I'm going, it's kind of the same thing I was doing earlier. If you remember the technique I was doing here, down stroke, one up stroke, follow through, down stroke, one up stroke, follow through. It's a tough technique if you're not used to the economy picking stuff, but it, it makes this a lot easier. Down stroke, follow through with that one up stroke. I'll see if I can stretch my fingers a little bit more. That's what it looks like. That's my fingering too, pinky pointer ring. Let's play all of that. Okay, so after this, we jump up to the, the natural six right there. Again, targeting that natural six, coming from flat three, what do we get? Tritone again, you get that odd kind of quirky sound. Okay, so that last one, after I hit this low note, jump up to the B string. I think I'm jumping up with a pick. I think I am doing that, so down like this, there's that low note. Jump up to the natural six, that B flat. Jump down to the flat three, then play the five, just like that. Right, I'll do that whole thing. Okay, after I get here, go to the root, slide back two frets. I'm gonna play everything up to that point. It's a little tricky. Uh, this part right here, I have another fingering for, which I'll show you here in a second, but let me just play this. Now once we get here, we, we play flat seven right there. What note is this? Flat five, one of the color notes. Remember, I'm still looking at this as my root to kind of get my bearings. I'm here on flat seven after the slide back. Quick hit of flat five little uh, repeat of the flat seven, so then I hit the note back and fret from flat five, the normal four, then slide back to the natural six right here, right, so I'll do all of that, so, and again, what am I doing here, natural six, back to that flat three, featuring that tritone, so we're kind of hearing that tritone sound, I think, three different places in this solo, if I'm not mistaken, so let me play from here. there and we kind of all, all transition from here. I'll play the whole thing actually. Kind of makes sense when you hear it in time with everything. After we play this note twice, so you play flat three, natural six, flat three twice, come down these three notes, flat three twice, then root fifth, flat seven, little slide from root up to two. He, he likes to do these little things a lot, so that's root sliding up to two, kind of back and forth, and then you eventually end on flat seven right there. So I'll play that like one more time. Flat three, one, five, flat seven, little slide back to flat seven. I'm gonna play the whole thing slow, see if we have anything else to talk about. we finish. So let's just talk about all of these kind of little intricacies and kind of why it sounds the way it does. So remember, every note that we just played is all in that pool of notes I already talked about. C sharp minor with two color notes, natural six, flat five. That's the only thing that's happening. Now the thing that sounds kind of strange or odd with this particular lick or why it sounds the way it does, it's obviously you're jumping around quite a, bit, quite a bit, you know, playing low notes, jumping up, jumping to another string, that's a big factor. But another factor is the groupings that you have for certain licks. So if I show you kind of the grouping, what's the first grouping? Right, that's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's kind of, that feels kind of groups of four, sort of. But watch when I hit this right here. That whole run right there, to me, feels like groups of five, and that's why it's so, that's why it feels so kind of odd sounding in the mix. So if I do this, coming from it right here, this first little, that B, jumping down the F sharp, I'll play it in context. Bam, right when you hit this, listen to the grouping. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. 
So that whole time, groups of five accenting one and three. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. Every time I play one or three of that, those little groups of five, it's always a high note. So you're hearing ba da 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 So you can kind of structure your licks like that if you want. Like if I play a simple one like this, C sharp minor, I'll do that same grouping. Right, same thing. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. Very, very common sound. And that's what he's doing right here. I'll try to see if I can play it. Watch this. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then continue like that. So, uh, yeah, that's that's one thing that really, I think, colors the sound, those groups of five. So if you like that sound, just kind of get in your hands and start messing around with it. It's also really easy to do with this technique. Right, because what I'm really doing is two strings and then three strings. That makes perfect sense if you're accenting one and three groups of five. One, two, three, four, five. Right, makes perfect sense with that grouping. So pretty easy to do once you have some licks that make sense with it. And then the other little part right here, it's kind of the rhythm part, pretty simple. You just play this little hit twice, one little hit of this chord. Right, that's like, it feels like you're playing F sharp major right there, the third and the root at the same time. One little hit, and then one of these, just two little notes stacked, bum, stacked, bum, here, bum, bum, pretty simple. And then it, ver it has variation every time, so that's the first one. The next one is exactly the same, and then the, en the ending is this, you just double it. Right, that's the difference. And then the third one is different again, and that same thing starts exactly the same, but then you go just little, like kind of simple blues licks right there. And then the last one, and you're just playing these two notes, bum, 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 da, da, da. very pentatonic, like fits right in that scale pretty perfectly. So that part's pretty straightforward. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, see if I can, I'll run through it one more time slowly, uh, just to make sure we got everything, so. Time slower if I can. Do that a little better. Yeah, so that's the part. I mean, it's really just figuring out the technique. You can kind of see what I'm doing. A lot of times, I'm doing like you know, when I can hammer on or pull off, I am doing it. I'll often do like a little economy picking when it makes sense. But yeah, you can kind of see little mo movements that I'm doing. I don't necessarily think it's good for you to just copy like literally what I'm doing because everyone's got different techniques. This is just kind of my approach. You can approach it however you want. Um, speaking of that, let me go over one more fingering for this that I think might be easier. So we've got this. All of that's the same. Now instead of this, remember that like I was doing earlier? That's root four flat three. That to me makes sense, but I honestly might think it's this right there. So instead of this, we do this, pick, slide back, which then, instead of doing what we were doing originally, right, ba bum bum it now looks like this, bum 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 right? So that kind of makes things a little bit easier. That now looks like this, instead of uh, coming down like this, which is what I'm doing, it will be now this. Um, let's see, yeah. So that's kind of nice because it does get you in position instead of sliding back with the pointer finger, you can just do like middle pointer. I'll play that one more time from here. You see what I'm talking about? I'll do the whole thing with that fingering. So you do have an option to alter that fingering. I'm literally changing one note. That one note instead of this, I'm moving this E right there to this one. That, and because of that one change, everything shifts slightly. So you can kind of mess around with that fingering if you want. That will make things a little bit easier. I think it's probably the better fingering, but I'm just so used to I'm so used to that one. It's as I tried to practice with the other one, it just kept screwing me up. So I, I would, you know, pick a fingering and then stick with it. I would say. Yeah, that's the part. Also, if you're curious, um, there is a harmony happening. We don't have to talk, you know, I'm not going to walk through the harmony. Unless you want me to, just let me know and I'll, and I'll walk through the whole thing. Uh, but there is a harmony happening on the third repetition. Uh, I'm going to play it a little slower so we can hear it. Yeah, right there. Let me see if I can remember it. It's, it's pretty cool because it's the same sort of thing. 
same sort of thing, but down a third for the most part, not 100% of the time. So instead of here, we're now here. Right, so this happens on the third rep. I'll see if I remember what it is. That's kind of what it is. I don't know if I have that up to tempo as well as the main part, so I'm gonna try to play it slower. Let's see if I can play it. Yeah, I don't know if I'll be able to play it that fast. Ah, uh, you know what, let's try it anyway, here goes. So I'm gonna do it here at the original, uh, it's not actually happening at this point in the song, but I'm gonna do it a little bit slower, this is 75% tempo, just so you can kind of hear what it sounds like, see if I remember it. Let's see if I can get it, here we go. Ah, playing too fast, one more time. It's actually gonna come in right here with the recording. Here we go. Yeah, it's, it's a cool part too, and a lot of the licks and the shapes are the same thing because it is pretty much a harmony. Um, so yeah, you can mess around with that if you want. If you want to talk about exactly what it is, we can do that. Like I said, you're pretty much playing thirds for the most part. So the top one plays that, the bottom one starts like this. So together it should start, it should sound like like that, I'm just playing both notes at the same time. It's mostly thirds, but yeah, you can dive into that if you want. Definitely a pretty cool part. Uh, once you get the fingering down, I think things will make a lot more sense, but it's kind of up to you to figure out what uh, fingering you do want to use or how you want to actually pick this whole thing. I know I don't do it, but I'm pretty sure he does a lot of this. He would probably do something like this, I think. So what he does a lot, and this is something maybe you can try, it's not comfortable at all for me, so I don't do it, but that is hammering on to a string that you are not picking. So he might do something like this. Now I've been going like this, ring finger pick for that like string jump, that's high E string, G string, right? What I know he likes to do is this. He would like maybe pick this note and then hammer on to the G string without picking it. So he would do that, notice what I'm doing. Picking, hammering on, but not picking the string at all. That, that to me has never felt normal, but he does it all the time, so that might be something you can try too. You could do that, and then maybe like pick here, hammer on there without picking. Maybe pick here, hammer on there without picking. I have no idea how many times you want to do it, but that's something you could try if you wanted to. Like that. See again, picking, hammer, that might be something you want to try. Personally, I'm not a fan of it. So that's one more thing I did want to talk about right there. The, the probably the hardest part with this, it's not necessarily the speed or the lick. I mean, the lick is a little odd. It's the fact that it's swing. Swing is, it, it can be very difficult to do with economy picking, in my opinion, at least. I'm sure a lot of people have no problem with it. But if I just do this figure like this, right, downstroke, up, up, oh, excuse me. I'm doing it straight right now, ba, 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 just straight notes. It's easy to play because it allows my hand to keep this even motion going, but when you play swing, it's now like things are offset, like this note will be held a little longer than that, than that note, like running into the next note. Whereas when I play straight, it's all very even, but again, swing. It's that getting locking down that feel with economy picking and just kind of playing in general has always been a little difficult for me. So that's honestly the hardest part of this whole thing. But yeah, let me know if you have any questions um, about this part. Practice it. I would definitely play it slow, like, you know, find a metronome and just do everything really slow. Absolutely lock down the fingering and how you want to play it before you start trying to rack up the tempo because this lick can easily fall apart in your fingers like it has done for me all day. Um, it can easily do that if you don't have a solidified picking pattern and fingering. So make sure you get that stuff down. But yeah, hopefully all this stuff makes sense. I'll see you in the next one.